You do. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, let me go check it. Good evening. I just kind of want to get out the house for a minute, so I'm going to go see if I can handle the front porch on tonight. Just don't need anything flying all around me. All that good stuff. Oh, gosh, I already see stuff flying. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Hey, Robert. Uh, Desi, you going to come or just check on me? <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Let's see how much I can handle. I just wanted to kind of get outside. Hey, Vanita. I, I was so looking forward to seeing you this weekend. <laughs> and I hate everything was postponed, but... Hey, you know how that goes. Things happen, but we'll definitely be there in March for sure. Good evening. Are you calling me? Oh, okay. Good evening. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. Michelle, hey, Donna. No, I'm talking to Morgan. Don, hi, my sisters, Lisa, Diane. Hey, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for taking some time just to join me. Um, Michelle, I just been thinking a little bit. I'm not going to be up here long. And like I even said in my uh, title here, in my little post here, mental health and me. And some of you may have already heard um, my testimony a little bit. Not going to go into a whole, whole lot of detail on tonight. I was just kind of thinking, aircraft flying by if you hear that noise. Hi. Um, but I just kind of wanted to share just a little bit of, a, of my experience. I was just kind of thinking today and I just said, you know what? I just really feel led. I want to help somebody. I want to bring some knowledge to some things. And what actually helped me to come out of a situation that I was in um just last year 2017 2018 specifically and it was basically this um please share tag if you have any family members friends that you know have been dealing with anything as it relates to mental health i really would love for them um, to be able to hear this as well because sometimes you just don't feel like you know what to do and a lot of times um honestly some people who have not dealt with it they don't realize how much uh, people are actually going through when they have different type of mental health issues going on so for me i i had that as a problem and mine was depression and I, it, I'm not quite sure where it came from, what all that was happening and what was going on. Um, I was dealing with a lot of anxiety as well. Um, I was doing some reading uh, before and even found out that depression is really like the number one of the no number one thing uh, that's causing people to actually go out on disability is depression. And that surprised me. I didn't realize that, but that is something that's happening with people. Um, about two years ago, and actually is when I was diagnosed with seizures. Um, I was dealing with seizures for a while. I just never said anything. Um, I felt like I was having out of body experiences. I never said anything. I just thought maybe I'm tired. It just felt weird. I didn't know really what to say or think. Um, then finally one day I said something to Dexter and I just said, I need you to watch me. Something's going on. And it was at that moment that he watched me. Um, some people don't even realize y'all I've been up here. Uh, Dexter and I have been in the middle of speaking and while we we're there talking, and sharing I can remember being um, doing something specifically we were on Billy Graham's campus we were asked to come and do some training there so we were there speaking in the middle of our speaking um, he he know he knows now so he looked over at me and he saw that I was about to have an episode um, about to have this episode and there's something that I began to say initially this wasn't happening but all of a sudden when I'm about I was about to go into a seizure I would start saying mm-hmm that's right mm-hmm that's right I never knew I was saying that to this day I never heard myself saying it I only know I say that because Dexter has now told me um, that this is what I would say I would be doing a little flicking or something with my finger I learned um, but I'm standing up there and I'm in the middle of this seizure 
he continues on pretty much takes over and he's there talking it's amazing to me or training rather it's amazing to me how many people if you're not familiar with it they're not even aware have no idea whatsoever that I'm even in the middle of it but those who looked at me I've had someone to say something to me before because it happened here in our home uh, we were having a meeting here with some team members and I went into one and there was a young lady sitting on the steps she knew so we were able to talk about it later, but she just saw that haze and just glazed over look that I had in my eyes. So this is something that I had been dealing with for quite a while, but never said anything to anybody about it um, until he, he, you know, I told my husband and he actually saw it. So there's another aircraft right there. <laughs> so basically here I am now, finally Dexter takes me to the doctor. I go. And they run the test. It sounds like seizures, but we set up the appointment. They run the test. Lo and behold, Tanya, you're having seizures. It was at that time that they seemed to come more often. Maybe that started something within me. Maybe that created some type of fear or something in me. I don't know. It's just that every single day, every single day, I had a seizure. Five, six, seven times a day. I had a seizure. When I say mental health in me, I entered a state of depression, how that felt, and what that was like. It's even kind of hard to put into words, honestly, being uh, all of a sudden out of nowhere, I burst into tears and I have, I can't control it. I wasn't able to stop it. And then finally, when it seems to be just lifting up off of me, I can recall saying, I'm okay, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, okay, okay. And, and I'm just trying to get them away from me because I'm trying not to have attention. But I would go through those attacks, um, anxiety attacks, panic attacks, whatever you want to call them. The doctor did prescribe me something. But when I looked at the side effects of that medicine, it was causing me to have anxiety attacks. It caused depression, insomnia, um, those types of things. And I just didn't want to put something in my body that was only going to possibly amplify what it is that I was already dealing with. What in the heck am I going to do? Mental health. This is my issue. And I lived with it for months. All at the same time, trying to get myself together to really be mom and just live my life. Recently, my husband and I, we actually were um, doing another business meeting here locally. And we kind of shared the story. And I think that was the first time that I ever saw him come with so much emotion as my husband. Because he talked about basically just watching me. Um... And watching me even with our children and and them being in the back seat of the car and they calling on me and I not answer and sometimes I'm just distant not even hearing or there are times that I may even be having an episode and they not realize it and so it just got to a place of just trying to even it became just natural and it was a it was a part of life for my household while I'm still trying to basically live and what I mean by that is being who I am not going around talking about it not feeling good about myself had already battled low self-esteem for much of my life so now how what am I to do um, not happy about myself or my appearance even um, begin to gain so much weight I lost so much weight I then began to gain and I gained so much weight back one of the things I talk about often is exposure bringing closure I'm coming here tonight because I'm exposing some things and I'm exposing even that it's breaking up in here okay 
It might be just some of this airplanes flying over too. Dexter said it was breaking up a bit, so I'm coming in. I pray that you can hear me a little bit better. All right. So, um, what I was just saying last is um, one of the things that I'm even coming here for on tonight is exp I believe something is something that I say often is exposure brings closure. Um, a lot of times, we, can you turn it down some for me, Dexter? Um, no, turn the TV. Thank you. I think sometimes uh, we any I say this often. Anything that can remain hidden is really what the enemy brings to light. <laughs> he he deals with silence. I mean, I I learned a lot even as I worked in social work about abusers. Abusers want those that they are abusing. To, they want to disconnect them. They want to hold them in isolation. So if you think about things that you that come into the mind that you hold on to and they just circulate and you keep it within and you don't ever share, you don't ever expose that thing, it just gets bigger and bigger. And that's how the enemy plays on us. So for me to come here tonight kind of exposing this, talking about it again, I've shared the testimony, but how about knowing even for me to have gone through what I went through at that time, not feeling good about myself. I just mentioned my weight gain coming back. So I can say to you, I haven't felt good. I haven't felt my best. I've thought about how in the world can you be a part of such an incredible company where you're helping so many people lose so much weight, but you've gained all this back? Should you really be here? Is this something you really should be doing? The trial, the failing, or so it has felt because of what my body has gone through. Y'all, I'm telling you, it's been tough. But I live by what it is that I do. I don't attach myself to anything that I don't really believe in. I can't bring people anything that I don't believe will work. And one of the things, as I said, exposure bring closure. I'm bringing closure to some things because I'm exposing the enemy that has come after me to make me not feel good about me being in the place that I've been in for so long as if it's not worthy, if, as if it doesn't work because I know that it does. So you're helping me on tonight. Because I'm revealing to you even the new Tanya uh, that's about to be. Because I'm taking a stand and I'm going to do the things that I need and I desire to do for myself. And I had to come here to let all of you know, anybody that's dealing with mental health, anybody specifically, I want to talk about the depression, can talk about the seizures. It wasn't until was working with a holistic doctor. Actually, there was different diets and even then and foods that they were wanting me to try. But this one particular day, Dexter and I were in a store in downtown Wake Forest. And just looking at the things, beautiful little throws, all they had. But in the back, there was like a little area where someone was selling and talking to us about CBD oil. I just walk in. I like looking. I like learning. I'm reading the billboards. It was at that moment that she began to talk to me about that and my seizures. Because on her wall, she talked about the things that the oil could possibly help. When you're walking around on a daily basis, having five, six, seven seizures every single day, when you've been in this place of depression, and I was, I was getting better. I was pushing. Hey, I was out. I wanted to give it a try. I didn't have the same side effects as the prescription meds, so I did. Do y'all know what? Five, six, seven seizures every single day. Panic attacks weekly. I got the oil. We took it immediately. After taking the oil, I didn't have any more seizures that day, the next day, the day after that, 
that whole next week, two weeks, I had zero seizures. The depression that I was under came up out of that. I was back. I was more vibrant. I'm now interacting with my husband, with my children, and I'm different. I'm telling you, and I'm being really transparent here, because I'm talking about crawling in the bed at night to lay beside my husband, but my back turned. Crawling in the bed, being in the room, not engaged in conversation. I'm talking about where I'm not feeling so good. If it's the point where you go to bed and your desire is not even to get up the next day. Because I also was having suicidal thoughts. I would begin to envision. Come on, we talk about the mind. I can tell you some things. There's so much that I can share with you. There's so much I can learn. There's so many things that we're able to do to help people. But I'm not even able to walk out my own knowledge base. Because instead of me visualizing the very life that I truly desire, I would visualize a funeral. Oh, there was an attack against me. This is what I was living throughout this period. But like I said, when did it stop? CBD. So as I named this mental health in me, I just wanted to come out. I wanted to share. I wanted to let somebody else know because a lot of times we're not willing to try. Sometimes we don't believe. Sometimes we don't think it will really be so or work. And I just want to be a witness. And I want to testify to what it was for me and how it did for me. And just the other day, I actually pulled it back out. Deb, can you grab the bottle? Is it back there on my nightstand still or somewhere, I think? But I want to say to you, this is the thing that's so interesting to me. We were talking just yesterday and I said, Dexon, do you realize that? I'm not, I said, all of a sudden, I'm 49 years old. So here I am coming into my late 40s. I have lived over 40 years of my life. And now all of a sudden, I'm having seizures? Where the heck did this come from? And I said, but do you realize that I'm not having seizures anymore? I'm not dealing with that anymore? There can be different things. Like I can tell a trigger point. If I get too anxious, you know what I'm saying? But y'all, just on a regular basis to have that thing tiptoe into my life. I had it on the nightstand, if I'm not mistaken, is where I had it last, my nightstand. Mm, on my side. Oh, yeah, that's all I'm talking about. Yeah, the harmony. Um... So basically now it just feels really, really good for me to know that because of what's inside of this bottle right here. And I just want to show everybody here. This is what we have. This is our CBD oil. It's called Harmony. This right here has literally changed my life and I want it to change somebody else's. I haven't been up here and I was hesitant even at first in sharing what I'm about to say. Um, but I just felt the unction to really briefly, and I won't go into a whole lot of detail, but just even speaking about it again, um, because I really haven't come up here at all and said this to anybody as to what my family has been dealing with as it relates to my mom. But I'm grateful. So really, even right now with the tears, it's kind of like even... um tears of joy as we still go through our process but there was a diagnosis that we received about her I won't go into too much detail until I talk with her some more but there was a diagnosis that we received um, within her body and it came to us in May 1st of June so that's something that I've been dealing with and going through as a family and to see your mom walk around and be in so much pain. And you're praying, you're believing and all. And it was something of what it is that she had to deal with. I just want to make this point as I bring this to a close. There was a product still. 
that was recommended to try to help with this pain. Because it seemed like I don't care what we did, hardly anything worked. And again, it was CBD. And I took some time just to do a little bit of research here recently. And I read and I saw then that that's sometimes what it's even used for is pain. I share all this again. <laughs> Because I want people to know and understand. I've been silent. I've been a little bit more silent than I used to be when it came down to talking about our product line. Talking about things of this nature. There's a whole lot that I can share with you when this time comes. I will. But I will say that a lot of my silence had to do with some things and different things I would experience and would go through. And so I just kind of shut down a bit. But one thing I had to come to a place of realizing for me is you got to know when the enemy wants to silence you. Because if there's ever anything that you can do that would change somebody else's life for the better, he would rather you to be silent. So I'm coming to you now again to say, that exposure brings closure. And I'm not going to be in silent as I once was. You will be hearing a lot more from me. Because one of the things I know for me and my husband that we want to do and we want to see done. We want to see your life change for the better. And if there's anything that we can do to make that happen, we're going to do it. So we're going to bring the information. We're going to talk to you about the mind. We'll bring you information that will help you in your life, in your health. We'll help you to come to a place where you can get out of your own way. We'll help you come to a place where you will live the best life that you could ever live. I'm coming back. I'm going to do better. And I thank you so much for taking this time just to spend with me as I expose myself <laughs> a little bit more. Telling you what it is that I have been dealing with. How all that I had gone through in my life where it brought me up to the point that I am now. But the changes that I'm making in my life now to be a brand new Tanya even for myself. And if it's anything that we could ever ever do for you. To help you in your life if you have any family members, yourself even, tag somebody, send it to them privately in Messenger that will benefit possibly from this oil or anything else that we might have. Please put them in contact with us because I'm telling you, it will literally change their life. How's that sound? Look, I might need to put my reading glasses on. Now... To need reading glasses and to cry, I sure can't see <laughs> what anybody is saying right now at all. I can't tell if I got any questions, but I know I'm getting some love. I can tell there's some hearts going on. Yes, praise God. Oh, thank you, Gwen, for being here. Cassandra, thank you so much. Yes, yes, thank you. Hi, Lynn. I see my Michelle, praise God. But again, thank you guys so much for being here. I'm telling you, it's a pleasure. It's an honor. I'm grateful and I'm thankful. Um, this is big for me. I'm t it's, it's big. I get a lot of people a lot of times telling me, Tanya, we need more. If you want to hear from you more, I want to do. And I'll just sit in silence. I find reasons and excuses. Um, that's a part of it. That's a part of, you know, just who I am. That's That's been my life. Um, we get on people's nerves. I tell people, I let you know I'm a recovering people pleaser. Um, as a recovering people pleaser, a lot of times we make excuses and we find reasons as to why not to because one, we don't want to look crazy in front of people. I'm just being real with you. I've been through a lot, talked about, hurt, rejected, all kinds of things. I grew up with this from a little girl on up. These are the types of things I dealt with. It wasn't until I really got into my 40s that I came to realize what it is that I was dealing with in my life. Um, so for me to be able to come here and do this now, that's why. That's why I learned to release and it feels really good. Is it always easy? No, but it's something that I will continue to do. 
And so even for all my people pleasers out there, for me to come to this place to be recovering, I got something for you. It's going to be coming really soon. So I want you to stay connected because I'm telling you the liberties <laughs> that we should be walking in. We about to unlock some stuff, okay? All right, now. Babe, you want to come over here? I don't know. I'm not used to really ever doing anything without you. Yeah. You say hello? I'm on 10% anyway, you, so you can't be but so fast. You see one, you see the other, so y'all know y'all about used to that, right? Hey. Here you go. Hey, guys. I'm actually talking to somebody that's watching oh, the stream. Oh, okay. I didn't know I'm, that. I'm literally <laughs> texting somebody that's watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to call your name out. <laughs> I don't want to know who was that. Who might that be? I'm not going to call the person's name. Out. Okay. All right. You're nothing because you always drop so much wisdom. I love, even today, you know, we were talking. I go to him and I'll say to him, I bet I need your counsel. And I look for him to give me that counsel and to give me his wisdom. Um, you know, a lot of times I can come with a lot of feeling. I can come with a lot of... Um, emotion but he can come with the logic sometimes he needs me my feeling a lot of times i need what he brings me so even today you know in our conversation you know we had a very strong conversation it was good and i like what he said too because that's was like well we ain't fussing and we weren't we weren't fussing but you can always tell the passion that we both would be talking and speaking out of um but i appreciate him and i'm so grateful for him um and just being my husband i said he's actually the best thing that's ever happened to me so i'm so grateful for him. So that's why I'm like, he talk. No, no, Let just, me hear uh, from him was, a little bit. I was bit. reading some of the comments and one of the ladies said, I don't I'm, want it to go dead. Take it over there. Or one charge. of the ladies said, I'm, I'm still fighting. And, um, yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. Charge it. To walk with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So one of the ladies said, I'm still fighting. And <clears throat> my message is keep fighting. Don't stop fighting because I had a conversation today with, uh, a lady and she is going through anxiety. It's really bad. And uh, she's off her job because of the anxiety pills. And basically, I told her, I said, you know, we've got something that'll help you. So the, the deal is don't stop fighting. You've got to keep fighting. Uh, you owe it to yourself. Um, you owe it to your family. Because I'll tell you, Tanya mentioned that incident in the car. So we're driving down the road and... Our kids are calling her name and she's not responding because she's in the middle of a seizure. So I look over and I recognize that see, she's in the seizure. So I have to tell the kids, mom will be with you shortly. That's, that's, that's how I dealt with it at the beginning. Uh, and then we had a conversation with them and I was able to communicate to them, listen, mom is dealing with some things. So you guys, listen, if you, uh, some of you have had sickness in the house or you've had your, your loved ones to uh, experience different things, it changes the whole dynamic of the house. And hey, you didn't even share about driving, did you? Mm -mm. I haven't hey, driven. Hey, guys, Tanya <laughs> hasn't driven in two, years. in two years. I'm the driver. Because immediately when she was diagnosed, uh, the doctor said no driving because if you think about it, if she's driving and she has a seizure, where mm -hmm. is she going to go? What is she going to do? Mm -hmm. So I have been driving Tanya for two years. She's probably <laughs> gotten behind the wheel two, three times, maybe two, three times, uh, two, three times. And that's about oh, it. No. So we don't have to deal with that anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's so exciting. I don't, it's good to have you back. You know? <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, good to, it's good to have you guys. Hi, Antoinette. <laughs> so anyway, I, that's all I got to share. Just keep fighting, guys. Don't don't stop. Thank you, Tony. Do it not Tom? stop fighting. Okay, keep yeah. keep going, uh, keep pushing. Um, let me see. Can I say this right? I think I see a picture of Lolita. Is that Lolita? I'm not sure. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, I, I asked I asked the young lady that I was talking with today. Did the doctors say anything to you about CBD oil? She said, absolutely nothing. Now, I want you to think about that. The doctors didn't say anything about CBD oil. They were ready to give Tanya some kind of medicine that was going to cause her to have, what was it? 
anxiety, depression, anxiety. suicidal thoughts. Yeah, so was why would we get why would insomnia? We do it was so much. We yeah. never picked it up. We never picked it up. It's, it's at Target. It you stayed know? at Target. Yeah, yeah, at the pharmacy in Target. <laughs> yeah, I think that's interesting. The, the doctor never said anything. So she told you we went and got the oil before we got it here at TLC, but we went and got the oil. Boom, immediately. So I told the young lady today, I said, look, you got to get it, right? You just got to get it. So yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm looking forward to just even just the next steps because like, even what I had said before, and we're going to bring it to a close, and I didn't even mean to stay up here this long, but um, when I think about um, – a lot of times the things that, okay, let me put it to you this way. When I talk about how the enemy operates and when things come on the inside of you and they're present, they're there, it's lurking around, even down to the things that manifest in our bodies. Um, oftentimes it's trauma. There's traumatic experiences that happen within our lives and that thing comes. And this, this is when we talk about energy is everything and everything is energy. There are things that come and it finds a resting place and it's there and it grows. And, and this is where tumors and other sicknesses and diseases come from and I've even heard it explained as diseases so think about like a dis-ease not being at ease diseases these things actually find a place to lodge and to remain and grow and any time and I could see and this is where I know I've grown because there were times that Tanya could be dealing with things but I just dealt with them and I dealt with them alone I would hide I would keep it on the inside it would torment me as things that I would think about all of that so even for me to look at my husband and say, I need you to watch me. Something's been going on. It took me a long time to tell him, but I did. Now I come faster. Me to be here with you on the night, I had to make a decision because I get so inflamed. Like right now, I think it's a little, it's, it is better. I can look at myself and my face gets so inflamed. My ankles, different things was just happening. I'm like, oh, we about to expose this. I need to tell, let, I just need to let it out right now because when it does, it's a freedom. It's an unlocking where that, that yoke of bondage that tries to come to immobilize you but when you can expose a thing I'm going to tell you right now that's when it has to loosen its grip because you're telling somebody about it and I, were, I was remembering I told my husband recently I said I can remember it was years ago, but we had gone up north for a funeral. And one of my, I might have I shared this recently somewhere, it seems like. But I had a, I, we were at there for a funeral for a family member. And there was a man watching me. And I didn't know it though. So this man is watching me. And my sister saw him watching. And apparently his luck on me was strong. And he's on the other side of like a wall. We were like in the parking lot area. Then it's like this wall with a sidewalk. But he's there and he's looking over and he's watching. So Erica sees him. So then Erica looks and she's just locking eyes on him. And she's zoned. Again, energy is everything. Everything is energy. You can feel a thing. So she's watching him. And then finally he, he, it's like he looks and sees and when he saw she was watching him, he backed away and he went on about his business. But it wasn't until he saw her watching him, that's an exposure, he didn't move, he didn't retreat. Think about that. I'm telling you, that thing ministered to me because, oh God, it's so much. I'm telling you, I got some stuff for my people, please. I'm going to tell you because... For me, even with the state of mind I was in, I didn't walk in the same strength she did. She had so much more confidence, you know, than I had even about herself and who she is. For me, I was so used to retreating, you see? And so in retreat, I would avoid. That was that was a principle I carried. So as in, in avoiding things, I would I could have seen him with you, but I could have seen him watching, but then try to act like I didn't, thinking that that's the upper hand. But all that did was kept him lurking. It would have kept him lurking. Now, I didn't know he was looking, but you get my point. I, that's the type of person I was. I remember having someone follow me. I knew that he was. I tried to act like I didn't know as if that was the upper hand. That's crazy. I went into the store. He ended up following me into the store. I'm like, what in the world? I do this years ago. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So when my sister saw him, though, it exposed him. We're not completely knowing what he's thinking in his mind. We just know he now know. Oh, somebody watching me. Okay, let me let me go mind my business. Do you see what I'm saying? So putting some stuff out there and exposing that stuff, which is what I'm doing on tonight. I want the enemy to take his hands up off of me. 
I'm tired of not feeling good about myself. I done been through some things. I gained the weight back, like I told you. I'm about to get it off. Been trying, doing different things. But if I'm, if every time I get up or I walk by even a window and I'm looking at my reflection, come on, I want to help somebody on tonight. If I come and I'm looking and I'm paying, can I get, can I get real with you? And I'm paying attention to you and I'm looking at you and I'm like, well, why come I look at my legs and wait and come back on me? Oh my God, I hate my arms. I don't want to show them anymore. I won't wear the things that I used to wear. I'm always trying to be covered up. Oh, I'm just being real with you on tonight. I can't help you if I don't help me. Can't take my own advice. Why give it? I hope I'm helping somebody on tonight. Exposure brings closure. It's time. Thank y'all. I appreciate you being here. I look forward to talking with you some more, and I pray you have an incredible weekend. All right, y'all. Talk soon. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.